Hi, welcome to today's video about nanotubes and nanobuds. This is a nice movie of the high resolution electron microscopy of a carbon nanotube and a nanobud. This anchor is the nanobud. This is the tube. You can make uh, nanobuds by adsorption of uh, fullerene molecules, football molecules, C60 on uh, carbon nanotubes. In this process, uh, new covalent bonds are formed. Uh, hybridization of some atoms changes from sp2 to sp3. And in this movie, you will see a adsorption of another C60 molecule. And the carbon nanotubes were discovered in the year 1991 by Sumiyo Ijima and Toshinari Ichihashi. These are the types of carbon nanotubes. There are two main types, uh, the zigzag and the armchair. This describes the path around the tube. You can uh, change the tube diameters. And like um, graph graphene and graphite, um, nanotubes are also sp2 hybridized, have a high electron system. And some have chi chirality. This means um, for some of the nanotubes, there is a mirror image that is not identical with the other a version. That's called chirality. That's like uh, left hand and right hand. The carbon nanotubes are known for the high tensile strength and the thermal conductivity. This is a description of carbon nanotubes with uh, basis vectors u and v uh, of the sub-lattice. There are pairs of integers n and m. The uh, zigzag nanotubes have the integers k and 0. The closed zigzag pairs uh, consists of uh, 2k atoms. Armchair nanotubes have integers k and k. Their closed armchair pairs are of uh, 4k atoms. These are two examples. Um, at the top, that's the zigzag nanotube 8-0 configuration, the semiconductor. And at the bottom, you can see the difference here, different position of the hexagons. That's the armchair nanotube 4-4 configuration. And this one is a uh, metallic. This is the Kataura plot uh, of Hiromichi Kataura. It describes the energy band cap, which is here in the uh, y-axis versus the tube diameter of the carbon nanotubes. And you can see if the tube diameter is low, then the energy band gap uh, increases, you get a semiconductor. And if the tube diameter is big, uh, then you get a low energy band gap, and this means it's a more metallic nanotube. This is a picture of nanobuds with stable structures. They are committed uh, by 2 plus 2 cyclo addition of carbon nanotubes and fullerene C60 football molecules. For this, you need a uh, water vapor at a concentration of 45 to 365 parts per million. And um, you can see this anchor uh, gives the nanobud high strong um, mechanical properties. You can uh, make nanobuds uh, that are conductive and some are ferromagnetic. This is a picture of carbon-based hybrid materials made of graphene connected with boron carboxylic uh, pillars. They have a high potential for, for example, hydrogen storage. And uh, you would like to make a carbon nanotube uh, pillar with graphene. And um, this would give this material um, high electrical conductivity in three dimensions, not only in two dimensions, uh, like with uh, graphene. Uh, this kind of materials could be used as supercapacitors and uh, storage material. However, the synthesis is challenging. And uh, with these materials, you have a big uh, variety of possible structures. For example, you can uh, change the length of um, the carbon nanotubes, the distance of the nanotubes, and you can use doping, for example, with atoms like uh, boron and nitrogen. This is the carbon peapot. Uh, it's a uh, 60 molecules. Fullerenes inside a carbon nanotube. They were found in the year 2000. At the bottom, you can see the structure. This is the fullerene molecule, carbon nanotube. And uh, the carbon peapods have uh, different properties than the carbon nanotubes or the fullerenes. They have a big potential for nanolasers, nanopipettes, quantum computing, and data storage. Uh, you can do normal chemistry with uh, fuller um, carbon nanotubes too, and um, this is an example of uh, amino functionalized multi volt carbon nanotubes. Um, with these uh, functional groups, you can give these uh, compounds different uh, properties, for example, different solubility. 
This animation of multi-watt carbon nanotubes, they have a big potential as a cathode for the lithium air battery. A lithium air battery is not uh, a completed technology yet, uh, but this is very promising because it has a high energy density. That's why these compounds are very interesting. This is a picture of Hecalite, um, for example, gallium nitride nanotubes. Um, there are two different types, type 1 and type 2. The difference is here in the squares. This is type 1. Type 2 has a squares twisted by 45 degrees. Uh, these compounds are not yet uh, synthesized. However, theoretical predictions, uh, according to these predictions, uh, there should be stable Hecalite stru structures for carbon, silicon, zinc oxide, and aluminum nitride. This is a picture of tungsten trioxide, uh, WO3. Um, you can synthesize uh, nanos, nanotubes from uh, non stoichiometric tungsten suboxide, WO29.1 to 2.94. They have a diameter of 2 3, uh, nanometers. They can self assemble to nylon wires with 20 to 100 nanometer diameter, and they are highly conductive. And these uh, nanotubes are very interesting for smart windows and transparent electrodes. This is another example from nature that's immodulite aluminum silicate hydroxide found in uh, the Kyushu region in Japan in the year 1962. It's a uh, component of clay mineral and volcanic ash. These are natural nanotubes. The inner diameter is 1 nanometer, outer diameter is 2 nanometers. And immodulite has a big potential for composite materials and for catalysts. This is haloicide, uh, another aluminum silicate hydroxide. This is clay mineral. Uh, this picture is from a um, mineral in, from Indiana in USA. And these nanotubes have an inner diameter of 12 to 50 nanometers. They have a high specific surface area of maximum 117 square meters per gram. Uh, the global market uh, in the year 2022 for haloicide was a 40 million US dollar market. Haloicide can also be used as a catalyst, as filler for polymers and filters, and it has a potential for liquid crystals. This is a picture of titanium dioxide of the surface. Uh, you can make nanotubes by anodization of titanium metal at the surface. Uh, these nanotubes have a potential for batteries, memory stores. Memory store is a memory and transistor combination, and for catalysts. And there's an interesting uh, experiment of uh, titanium dioxide nanotube arrays that are coated with molybdenum doped manganese oxide. This gives you an anode that can be used for the electro oxidation of organic pollutants. This is a nice house uh, called uh, The Cube. It is located in Dresden, Germany. This is a carbon concrete house with carbon fibers. Uh, the trick is uh, with the carbon fiber, instead of steel, you save a lot of cement. Because in the, the concrete steel, uh, you have uh, to make thick walls to isolate the steel from the air. But with carbon fibers um, that do not corrode, uh, you save a lot of cement. That's the trick. And for carbon nanotube cement, um, there's a big potential predicted. Um, they should have a big, um, very high stability. This is a nice animation of the ultra-fast diffusion of ionic crystals and carbon nanotubes. Imagine what, you could, uh, what could be a future product of these technologies, nanotubes, nanowires, nanosheets. In my opinion, this could be the nanofactory. Uh, the nanofactory could uh, imitate the processes, the chemical reactions that happen in nature, like photosynthesis and to nitrogen fixation with uh, catalysts based, of molyb based on molybdenum. You could make all kinds of organic compounds just from uh, um, carbon dioxide in the air and water and nitrogen. And, for example, uh, fats, uh, carbohydrates, proteins, peptides, vitamins. And uh, you would want a selective reaction for, for example, L-amino acids and D-amino acids. You just want uh, one uh, of these components for every reaction. And the way to do this, to do this is uh, by using catalysts that are chiral. And uh, nanotubes ha have chirality. So in principle, this should be possible. And this would be a big uh, revolutionary product. This could be accomplished. And that was today's video about nanotubes and nanobots. 
And you can check out the links to the scientific articles. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.